right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. A lot of people realize that I enjoy building engines and I've got one here to build for a buddy of mine. Let's check it out. This is a 77 model, 440. I believe it's an old truck block. And we're gonna turn it into a stroker. Here's our 440 source stroker kit. And we'll have us a 512 or close. Uh, this is a 40 over with dished pistons. So basically this is gonna be a street stroker. And what we mean by that, uh, pump gas friendly, he wants to drive it on the street, uh, race it some on the weekend, stuff like that. It's not gonna be a 8,000 RPM screamer or anything, but uh, it's, it's gonna haul the truck and haul the mail here. Here's our crankshaft. I got it unboxed and wiped down. Man, the journals, all that stuff is just so beautiful. Uh, oil holes are chamfered, look really nice. Uh, radius uh, journals, all that looks great. I just looked it over here shortly. Um, everything's good. That's our bob weight card. I know a lot of people out there will be curious about that. The piston and pin is 749.8. And I'm gonna reweigh all this stuff, just check it. Uh, it won't take long. I've got a small scale and stuff. I can do it in a different video, but you see that's seven, basically 750. Here's the KBs that I put in that 400 I just built. They're 880, so much lighter piston. I have them over here to show you. And they're icons with a nice dish top. What I planned on doing today was just some early checks on this block. This block has been vatted, uh, new cam bearings, new freeze plugs been painted. And the owner actually showed me, this is uh, grease. They smeared grease on the uh, brass freeze plugs, painted it. And then whenever it's time to be pretty, you just take and wipe the grease out and your brass free freeze plug still looks nice. So that's cool. Uh, all this is gonna get cleaned up anyway, but the block has been, uh, board and honed 40 over. Essentially, I could blow it out and build it just like this. Um, we are upgrading to ARP main bolts like I put in the 400. Um, but I want to check the deck height on this. Let me roll it over here. Cylinders, they look really nice. The cross hatches all there. Like I said, board and honed, but it was never decked. So the build kind of grew after we got the stroker kit and such. And it could be built just like this, but truing up the deck would help it tremendously. I mean, I can see little stuff in the deck, uh, just pitting and stuff, and it would probably seal and be just fine uh, with a thick enough head gasket. But what we're gonna do is maximize this one some and get that compression up, uh, shooting for about 10.7, something like that. Uh, six or seven, whatever I can get with the gasket after we cut it. But before we know what to cut, which I'll take this to Ed at Ed's machine and we'll knock it out in a day. Uh, before we cut it, I wanted to measure, drop our crank in, measure journals, and then stick a piston in each corner, the same piston and rod, let me say. And I'll go from corner to corner and just check. I have a, a, a deck bridge actually belongs to Joe and I can see the difference in where the deck is and how far the piston is. And I can check each corner, um, check the center of the piston, just write down some measurements. And I'll have a very close idea of the difference in deck from front to rear. So let me get it flipped back over and I'll drop the bearings. I wanted to mic the uh, main journals before I do any of that, just to be sure. And I'll start from front to rear. Just like on our block, uh, the front one's gonna be number one. I'll make it one and that'll be five. So flip it, flip it good. There's our crank. I'm gonna start by micing these journals and I can do number one first. I got my two to three inch mic. Goes in 10 thousandths increments. Full holes there. I think I like the roller. Yeah, just like that.
light lift. Looks like two, seven, 49, 2749, uh, with a 1. There we go. 2749 with a 1. Try it again. Wipe them off. Two seven forty nine with a two. All right, I'm gonna check the rest of them. Come back to you. So if you want to see my numbers, they were all super super close. It could have even been, um, you know, my error that one ten thousandth or whatever it is there. So. Nothing out of the ordinary that I could tell. All that looked good. I cracked the bearings open. Here's our number. High performance 1277HG. Included with kit. So it's nice to order from them and get all the stuff that you need. Uh, for the most part. Um, Pop my caps off. Wiped them down. Took a little file and I dressed these edges here. Just to be sure there was no burrs or nicks. These caps have been off and on a few times. Um, and they come off off and on pretty smoothly. The oil or the um, the holes have been tapped a while back. So I'm gonna get out my new ARP bolts and uh, get these caps torqued down. There's a cap if you want to see it. That one needs they need cleaned up still. So I'll wipe out the inside today. Um drop in some bearings, like I said, and get this thing spun around and checked out. Uh, everything looks really nice with it. And I've got some plastic gauge. Thought about plastic gauge in a little bit. I can go ahead and do all five of those. I can set up my dial bore and check them as well. But if the plastic gauge looks uh, good, we may roll with that right now, so. Let's just see what happens here. So we're a long way from actually assembling this engine, but I am gonna put a little dab of engine oil on these bottom bearings, which are actually the top bearings, if you know that. See, I got a little bit of stringiness there. That's my Lucas. Just a little dab in my oil. I don't want a lot. That's why I'm doing this with my finger instead of a brush. I can control how much there is and then wipe it off later, but I cannot be convinced to put a brand new crank on brand new bearings totally dry. Um, you can build your engine any way you'd like, but at least these upper shells, getting them lubed because the, the when the crank hits that, and I tighten it down to check my plastic gauge. I don't want it spinning, but also I don't want to just tighten it into that real hard. It will push that little bit of oil out. I, know, I understand oil, um, the film of the oil is a certain amount of thickness. I'm not sure what it is. Um, and I get all that but I would rather these be protected. Better safe than sorry. If something shows up funny, I'll get out my dial bore gauge. I'm doing the face of that thrust bearing too. This is the big thrust. I like the big thrust bearing. So that's all lubed up. I can drop a crank. I mean, into the engine, not on my... First time ever. There we go. Okay. I'll give it a little roll. That's about the perfect spot, and I'll show you why. My oil 
holes. They're all off center, like this one has two here. Um, I can drop a plastic gauge in between each one of those. So boom, 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 and boom. And then I'll get my caps torqued down here. So let's work that process real quick. I got all my bearings stuck in. They're dry. I'm gonna put me a little dab of my ARP lubes right here where that washer is gonna to touch. Just like that. Bolts look nice. They're coming with the little sleeves. Keep the threads protected. And we're going to 100 foot-pounds. I can do that in three steps, I think. My plastic gauge is on the engine. I'll show you that in just a second. Coat up all my washers. Chamfer, I'm gonna stick it up. Just for now. There we go. There's already some on the bottom side, so I don't need to do that. And most of this will get cleaned off later before I do the final assembly and I'll have to redo it. So I will pressure wash this engine and brush out all my passages before that happens. I've got a lot, several engine builds coming up this year. Another big block Mopar, a couple small block Mopars. Maybe even a slant six. We shall see, won't we? There's a bolt. There's a sleeve that'll popped off there. The length is a little bit longer. You add the washer, it's probably the same, but there's fewer threads, so they need to be stronger. That bolt's got a little funky spot right there. I would turn the camera off, but my hands are dirty, so. Might as well leave y'all. Hopefully you can see that little piece of plastic gauge on there. I went ahead and placed them all. They're a little bit off center. I was trying to do that because these bearings have grooves. They are full grooved bearings. And if I put it right in the middle it could part of it. I mean, it's going to go in the groove anyway, but I thought I'd get a better reading off to the edge just a little bit. All right. I got them torqued and bolts popped out. Caps are now loose. I did all that stuff so it wouldn't waste everybody's time. There it is on our cap. If we want to check it there. Hmm. I would call that about two. I mean, it is what it is. Let me set this cap over. I'd call that two thousandths. Move on to number four. We're definitely more than one and a half. I'd call it a nice two. It's not quite three. Two. Right at two there. We're wider than two here on the crank. So that may be worth measuring. About the same. Oh, that looks like two all day right there. Call it two. I'm gonna get these wiped up here. I can get these cleaned up. Uh, put, put a little bit of lube just like I did on that other side. Torque my caps back down. And then give it the spin test. I mean, that's always, even Mr. David Vizard advised that when doing this. Um, I think he uses WD-40 lacquer thinner and engine oil mix. So it's very, very, very thin. But he spins and spins and spins just to feel the, how free that crankshaft is in there. But, I mean, 
everybody, you all at home can tell this is that line bore and the crank itself are in pretty nice harmony right now. So let's see how it spins. Torque it back down to 100 pounds. Bolts are all lubed up nicely. I got to get me a Woodruff key and put on here. I grabbed it earlier and got cut. Anyway, I'll try not to do that. Wrap some tape around it or something. And I have a nice crank socket, but man, it's smooth as butter. And even when you spin, like I, if I spin that with my finger, it keeps going just a second, like the momentum of the crank. Maybe you can see that. I'm probably going to end the video off of this. I'll show you how close our throws get. Um, lots of room down in there. Through here. I'll light that up next time for us. If you ever need to see a good stroker clearance video, Mr. Kevin Griffiths at Griffiths Garage did an awesome, awesome video. He's building a monster of an engine. Everything is wonderful here. Miles of room. Right there may be the closest. But she's clear. Good to go. I appreciate y'all watching. And next time we'll come back and check that deck height with the pistons in. So I'll see y'all then.